What is going on with the housing market in Chatham County, Georgia, AKA Savannah and the surrounding areas? All right, guys, let's go over the general market of Chatham County first, and then I'll go deeper into Pooler, South Savannah, and then Tybee Island. Now, before you see any of the numbers, I wanted to let you know the following. All of this data came from the Savannah area MLS, meaning the multiple listing service, which is the system that all of the realtors use, okay? So it doesn't include any for sale by owners that decided to sell it on Zillow and none of that. Also the data, it's only from January 1st to the last day of July of this year, 2022. Okay, so here are the numbers. As you can see on the upper right, 13.3% down when it comes to how many houses has sold. The price medium went up 14.3%. Months of inventory went up. That means a lot more competition for sellers, right? 17.1% more. Days to sale, went faster that's why i have it on green because this is actually positive for everybody who's looking to sell it went from 36 days to 28 days that is 22.3 percent better that's why i have it on green even though the number is actually lower all right now the number of new listings that is how many people actually decided to sell this year it's down 7.3 percent now let me share a new perspective with you because maybe you've been watching the news and they tell you don't buy a house it's too late to sell, the market is going to crash, everything is going to hell, whatever, all right? If I tell you that out of 100 people, 87% of them are willing to move forward, would you think that everything went to hell? If I tell you that out of 100 people, 85 or 80% of them are actually willing to sell or buy a house, would you think that is extremely horrible? Would you think that is actually the end of the world? Probably not, right? So these people are looking at the stats and they only focus on the negative because they can sell you fear, right? People react a lot better to fear. They are trying to make you click on the link so you can read the news of how horrible the market is. Now, yes, 13% less people are buying. So that means to me, that 87%, that means 87 out of 100 people are still willing to buy. That's 87 out of 100. So basically almost everybody is still willing to buy. Now, am I recommending you to buy? No, because I don't know your situation. I haven't talked to you. I'm not giving you any advice on what you should do with your own money and your own life at this point. But I'm telling you, obviously, the news are always looking to sell fear and fear and fear. And guess what? People are still going to get divorced. People are still going to die. People are still going to have job transfer. People are still going to move. They are going to have babies. That means that they need housing. All right, let's talk about Pooler right now. You see those two numbers on red, meaning 18% less people decided to buy and 4.3% less people decided to put the property on the market. Okay. Now, the number of new listings, which is 4.3% less, is not a big deal to me. 18%, I think it is actually reasonable when it comes to a the, the change. Now look at the other numbers though. Price median went up 23% just from last year. That's 23% in 12 months. That is not five years ago, seven years ago. It's only 12 months, 23%. Months of inventory, that means a lot more competition for sellers, but it's actually better for buyers since they have a lot more options now. And the other number is days to sell, 38% faster meaning it went from 34 days to 21 days all right i have the number on green because obviously it's better for sellers to sell it faster rather than later all right guys i have a bonus for you i went the other day to the tanger outlets in pooler and i asked these people this question if i could give you a million dollars so you can live in savannah or pooler which one will you pick and why um i would pick pooler because i like to be outside of the traffic although okay. transparently poolers traffic has increased significantly over the past year so um, I would potentially live on the outskirts of Pooler and then outskirts you're close to Savannah so you can get is into there anything town. about Savannah that you don't like um, I love Savannah it's a beautiful area there are some parts of town that you wouldn't maybe want to You'd want to avoid at certain times of the evening. Mm -hmm. You need to be smart about it, but there's a lot of beautiful parts of Savannah, like Forsyth Park mm -hmm. and Bay So Fuller, one, Savannah, zero. All right, thank you so much. Hey, sir, if you could pick between Savannah and Pooler, right, if I give you a million dollars right now, and you could pick a house between Savannah and Pooler, 
Which one were you picking? Why? It's about five years ago I would have chosen Savannah, but today I would have chosen Pooler because Pooler is up and coming. Okay. You see new new neighborhoods building. You got shops. You got restaurants. You got everything that you need for yourself and your for, for your family. There you so go. So today Pooler. So that's two. Pooler 2 Savannah 0. Alright, that is only a snapshot of a longer video that I'm creating about Pooler versus Savannah. And let me tell you right now, Pooler is winning so far. So pay attention because I'll post that soon. Now let's talk about the South Savannah area, meaning Georgetown, Windsor Forest, and that general area. Alright, here we are. In the South Savannah area, something very, very unique that I noticed is that it was the only area of the market that actually had more sales. I mean almost the same. So 2% more sales and inventory actually went down. So 23% less inventory. That means that it's actually even a stronger seller's market for the people that own property in the South Savannah area, right? The days to sale went down from 36 to 29 and almost the same exact amount of new listings. It went from 822 last year to 816 this year. So basically 0.8% change. That's basically the same exact thing. All right, let's find out what's going on in Tybee Island. You can see a few red numbers, a few greens. So the price meter went up 21% in the last 12 months. Now, something that I had to double check and triple check was the months of inventory. It went from a seller's market to a balanced market, almost a buyer's market, right? It went from 1.9 to 5.2%. That's 273% more inventory, meaning more options for buyers. Now, just so you have an idea, there's only 10 properties under contract in Tybee Island and 47 active listings. That's why that number changed so much. But there is a very simple explanation for this. If you notice 680,000, like that price range is a lot less likely to have a, a high volume of sale compared to 250 or 300,000. Make sense? So Tybee Island is just a different market between the same market. Now, two other stats that I didn't include on the chart are the amount of available homes in Chatham County, which is actually 608. So we have 608 homes available and 855 under contract at the moment. Now I'm recording this at the end of July. So right now things might change. If you're watching this video, please search on my channel. You're probably going to see a better update. Now, listen, if you don't understand what these number means, just go on my channel and find the recent videos that I've made about what to do, what I recommend, what I would do if I was in your shoes. All right. I'm not going to go into details on this video because I don't want to make it 20, 30 minutes long. Okay. So go to the other videos and check that out. Now, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment. You got my number down below. If I can help you, you can send me a text message or call me or send me an email if you need to.